Gyarados is an absolute beast. This wannabe dragon is widely loved by the Pokemon community, but is often looked at being an overpowered juggernaut, especially when it comes to Pokemon challenge runs such as Nuzlocke's. Well, today, I'm going to see how it fares in a solo run. Staying in Gen 3, but going back to where it all started, how fast can I beat Pokemon Fire Red with just a Gyarados? Well, let's find out. But first, let's talk about Gyarados a bit. It's... It is true, this fierce flying water serpent has some wild stats, especially its base physical attack. Now that's pretty amazing for anything Gen 4 and on. We are stuck with the old physical special split still, so a lot of Gyarados moveset and TMs it can learn are going to be special moves. Um, and Gyarados is special is a measly 60 base points which is going to cause some major issues now this is not the only issue that we are going to see in this run a lot of the physical attacks Gyarados knows are normal moves meaning we have no super effective special or physical moves and the only physical attack we get that is not normal is earthquake and while we don't get that till about the eighth gym but in short here the rules Gyarados in battle only no items in battle I will allow held items, no glitches, I play on 4 times speed. Let me know in the comments how fast you think we'll beat this challenge, and remember, we use in-game time to judge it, and I just want to say thank you guys for watching the other videos, that was our hardest challenge yet, but let's get into it. We start our run by beating up on our poor rivals Bulbasaur, as we have replaced Squirtle by using the Pokemon Universal Randomizer, and while you may have noticed here, Gyarados only knows Thrash. And while Thrash is an interesting move, it's a move that will hit two or three times consecutively, not allowing for any other move to be used, but the Pokemon then becomes confused at the end of the second or third turn. Well, this is all fine to Danny when we are beating up Pokemon that do not resist Thrash, but how will it fare when we make our way to the Rock Hard Gym Leader Brock? Well, in anticipation of Brock, we take on every trainer through the Viridian Forest to get as much XP as we can, and I even go back and take on the optional rival just to make sure we have that little extra flare ready to go as you can see Gyarados is also part of the slow XP growth uh, group and we are only even at level 10 by the time we take on all those rivals now before I take on Brock I do take on the trainer in the gym because one extra XP does not hurt us one bit two it also allows me to test out how Thrash is gonna go against a ground rock type Pokemon and see how well we do with it and well it doesn't do that great. Geodude is resisting it quite a bit, and we keep getting confused because of the way it works and dealing confusion damage to ourselves. And this fight isn't easy by any means. As you can see, we actually are at 2 HP, and we still have to take down the sand Shrew. And thankfully, we are able to, without hitting ourselves in confusion, take down the sand Shrew, and it just didn't want to attack us for some reason. So... Oh well, I guess, but I don't think we're going to be able to take on the big rock snake Onyx as we stand here. So I go back to the forest and we're going to go train up. And I do decide to go to about level 13, as that is our next damaging rounding threshold. But I also think we need to try something maybe other than Thrash. And that is Struggle. Struggle is 50 base power that also does quarter of the damage as recoil. But using this, we get rid of the pesky confusion that thrash can cause and that means we're not going to cause as much damage to ourselves with that if we accidentally now our first attempt versus brock goes pretty well well the geodude does at least geodude takes about three struggles to take it out and we leave ourselves at about 41 hp so i'm thinking we're actually in a pretty good spot until onyx lands a rock tomb it puts us at 25 hp and then it just lowers us to the point where one more rock tomb takes us down. Okay. Well, let's go grind up and go to level 15. Again, next damaging rounding threshold. But also allows us to get a little more defense, a little more HP for this battle. And hopefully we can see something work. Okay. Attempt number two. And we started off the exact same way. We take down the Geodude in three struggles. But we are at 46 HP. A little bit more, not a lot, but let's see how this fares out for the Onyx. Again, he rock tombs us, taking us to 31. But then he decides to never hit that again. And Gyarados is able to take down the rock snake with the struggle. 
and we attain our first gym badge. And it's off the Mount Moon. Uh, we go right through everything here. I didn't battle many trainers, um, but we get right to the super nerd and just thrash our way through. This move is super handy as long as we just don't hit ourselves in confusion. And then we pick up the Helix Fossil because all hail Lord Helix. And then it's off to Cerulean City. Once in Cerulean, I decide it's better to take the rival on before Misty since we only have Thrash and I think getting Bite might be helpful for the Star Mirror later on. And while this fight goes about exactly the way everything has gone since Brock, we spam Thrash, we take down the first two Pokemon, we actually hit ourselves in confusion only once, thankfully, otherwise this might have been dicey. Um, and Bulbasaur only put us, gave us poison instead of sleep, so eh. And before taking on Misty, we go help Bill get himself out from his weird uh, experiment and grab the ticket for the SSN. And then it's on to Misty. And I was so confident in this fight, I forgot to save. And in two bites, we get two flinches somehow. And then we take down the Staryu after it potions up. And then to the Starmie, we just use Thrash. And two Thrashes is all it needs. And our second gym badge is right there. We then make our way all the way to Vermilion City to take on Surge. And I got to say something here quick. As a kid, I loved those tunnels. I used to just run up and down them, just watching the colors kind of change on this game. And yeah, I don't know. Am I the only one that did that or what? Now before we take on Surge, we must do a little bit of housekeeping stuff. We go grab the voucher for the bike because that's going to be important later on. And then it's on to the SSN. And we are going to take on the rival because there's not much for us here on the boat, at least in my opinion. And well, the first attempt doesn't go exactly as i was hoping as pidgeotto sand attacks us and well yeah we all know what happens when sand attack hits right we are able to get all the way to the ivysaur but due to confusion and the sand attack we unfortunately do not get anywhere past the little sliver of health that we got the ivysaur all the way down to and it is able to take us out, causing us to have to do this again. And this time, we just decided to thrash the Pidgeotto. That way, we don't have to worry about any sand attack. And makes a completely different fight. We are able to take out Raticate with Thrash as well. We break Confusion versus the Kadabra. And then we snap out of Confusion versus the Ivysaur. And are able to win that battle. Go rub the captain's back, give him a nice little massage, and get the HM for cut. And go to the kitchen before heading off the SSN. Grab the berries from the trash can, because berries are super hard to come by in fire red and leaf green. So those are definitely going to come in handy down the road. And now it's time to take on Lieutenant Surge. And I was actually quite scared for this one, obviously, with four times weakness to all three of his Pokemon. This is a bit scary. But wow this was easy this was easy Gyarados showing that we are able to start moving through everything we grab the bicycle and then make our way through rock tunnel all the way to the casino and it's time to take on the rocket hideout make quick work of the grunt sitting outside as Gyarados is now 10 levels over what we're going to probably see for the most part in here and with brute force we're able to get in we go pick up our rare candy and then we make our way to grab the lift key from the final grunt. I don't I didn't battle many people here. I feel like Gyarados is finally in a really good position. And then it's on to take on Giovanni for our very first time. And we're at about 2 hours and 50 minutes, which for my first playthrough of Fire Red and how long? I think that's pretty solid especially considering what happened at the start with Thrash and Struggle. But we take on Giovanni here, and Water Pulse takes on his first two Pokemon with relative ease. And Kangaskhan, I wasn't sure what to do, so I did Water Pulse first. Realized it didn't do any damage. And then we went back to Thrash, taking it out. I then grabbed the Coin Case and the T. That way we can make on our way to Saffron. And if I just in case I wanted to buy a couple TMs later on, because some of these TMs are paywalled, which is so crazy anyways it's time to take on erica we have a cherry berry equipped just in case we see a stun spore i decide the dragon rage hoping victory bell's health isn't more than 40 for half and unfortunately it is so it's a three shot if we're using dragon range i decided to go for bite i'm trying to avoid thrash here because of erica having three pokemon i don't want to get confused but that results in us getting paralyzed 
We have half health for the Tangela and the Vileplume Plume left. And yeah, the Tangela takes us out. Okay. Well, I'm going to try this fight one more time and maybe set it up a little bit differently. Maybe we do use Thrash out in front, getting the Victory Bell down, and that way we're not paralyzed after the Cherry Berry. So we take it out, and then the Tangela comes out next, and oh, if Thrash took it out, I think we'd be actually in a very good spot. But now we hit ourselves twice and get poisoned. And we're at 20 HP before we take out the Tangela. Okay. Well, Vile Plume gets a pretty easy job here, unfortunately. And we're down. I take on the rest of the trainers to try and get a little few more levels. And then we go heal and come back and try this again. So, we're trying this one more time here. We are at level 35 now. We've made it to our next damage rounding threshold. I do the same start. Dragon Rage and Thrash. So, we are not paralyzed we still don't take down the tangela in one shot which is unfortunate or do we i think we just low rolled but we didn't hit ourselves in confusion now it's just the vile plume and we are able to take it down in a couple thrashes that was close though due to the stun spore uh we go pick up the hm for fly catch a spiro and then head all the way over to the lavender town and at about three hours and 11 minutes doing pretty solid and going into this fight, I'm feeling pretty confident where we're sitting at. Now, Pidgeotto, we're going to Rage, and it gets that pesky sand attack off again. <sighs> okay. Well, we're going to thrash the Gyarados, as that's the only attack we really have. But unfortunately, we miss, and then become fatigued after only a two thrash turn. And then Growlithe comes out, and as long as it doesn't burn us... Oh. Okay. Well, it burns us, so our attack stat has now been cut in half, and... That's going to make things a little interesting. We Because even there, we don't one-shot a Kadabra, which has pitiful physical stats. Um, but we'll try this again and hope for the best. We thrash the Pidgeotto this time, taking it out. And then we actually get a three-turn thrash, which is perfect. So we're able to take the Gyarados down without having to worry about confusion. The Growlithe is next. We hit ourselves, but it just leers perfectly. And then we get the Water Pulse off and take it out. And we are able to snap out of confusion and take down the Kadabra with a bite. And then the Ivysaur is next. And this is where we just get the thrashing. But it does put us to sleep. And it starts to go to town on us with Rage Release. As Gyarados didn't want to wake up till 25 HP. Thank goodness he did though. And looking back on these last couple fights. I'll take the time now because here. We should have went and got Return way before this. Um, as that's going to be what we do after getting this Poke Flute, but then we wouldn't have to worry about confusion with Thrash and still have a very strong physical attack. It is what it is. We take our way down the bike path, not taking any of the trainers on, just because I don't see the point still right now. I want to see, like, we're, we're testing time, and I can't get through there, so there's a waste of bit of time. Um, but we're trying to see how fast we can do this, right? So if I don't see the point in taking on trainers, there's no point. We go get the gold teeth, double team, and the HM for surf here in the safari zone. And then we make our way to Koga. But before taking him on, we make sure to equip the Petra Berry as toxic and poison damage is just no fun. And then we go into this fight with a new moveset, teaching surf over water pulse, giving that extra little stab bonus um, and a little bit more damage. As you can see, surf takes down the coughing. And what we're going to do here is just alternate surf and thrash as mux got a pretty good special defense so thrash here is going to be able to one shot it which is beautiful that did crit so i think that didn't matter we were able to get a little bit of damage on the coughing and then it hyper potions and we hit ourselves in confusion due to thrash again we should be teaching return here instead of using thrash but it is what it is after two surfs we take down wheezing and we beat koga i then go get rain dance before heading to sylphco and let me tell you as someone that has not played gen 1 games in forever I completely forgot how to maneuver through here and I'm not afraid a minute. I did have to look up a map to make sure I got to the right places. Anyways, we take down this grunt here um, before getting to the lift key. Again, I didn't do many battles in here. I think Gyarados has really good moves and really good stats at this point, And I just don't think we need to be where... We need to and i also realized later on in a different playthrough that i've started that there's a way faster spot to this than getting here and i know i missed a few items as well doing this as quick as we can but speed 
let's see what we can go for and get going as we take on the next rival fight. And, well, Pidgeot is going to make this not hard this time. No sand attack, two thrash, take it down. We do get confused again, and we are not doing any damage to this Gyarados. And I decided to Dragon Rage instead of just doing thrash again. And we have nine hit points. We are able to take down the Growlithe due to Surf. Alakazam comes out next. Thrash does not take it out, but it just future sights. And then the beefy Venusaur takes us out. Okay, we finally smarten up here and teach return over Thrash, which I think is going to be tremendously different for us as we don't have to worry about confusion anymore. So let's see how this works out. Gyarados is a two shot with return still, just like it was with Thrash, so that's perfect. And then the next Gyarados comes out. And then we Dragon Rage to start. It Dragon Rages as well. And then we're going to hit Return to take it down. We have 49 HP. Not a lot. And the problem here is we've taken two Intimidates. We're minus two attack for when the Venusaur comes out. And Venusaur is bulky. That Return does nothing. It puts us to sleep and gets a critical hit Lit Razor Leaf. All right. Well, let's try this again and see if... Maybe luck can be on our side. Oh, oh, the Pidgeot Feather Dance. Let's just reset. Let's try this again. Okay, so a couple things. We're minus two attack when it comes to the Venusaur. There's not much we can do about that right now unless we level up to 50 to get Dragon Dance. It also likes to put us asleep. So let's equip the Chesto Berry and see if that's something that can help us out a little bit here. Start starts off the same way. Pidgeot goes down to two returns. At least we're not seeing sand attack because that's that's a little stressful. And then a return is a three shot versus the Gyarados, which is I wish it was a two, but it is what it is. We have 114 HP. We take down the Growlithe. We're we're looking pretty good actually. I'm liking where we're sitting here. Reflect comes up. Great. So now we have to do with reflect and minus two attack. I go right for Dragon Rage, trying to chip away here. But the Venusaur just keeps putting us to sleep. And then Razor Leaf is just too much as we don't wake up and takes us out. All right. Well, let's try this fight one more time before we start leveling up. Because I do think there, there's a possibility here for sure. If we don't see the Reflect, maybe we can do it. If we don't see us go to sleep, maybe we can do it. Let's see what happens here. Start exactly the same way. Pidgeot goes down to 2, Gyarados goes down to 3, but we do take a little bit more damage, unfortunately, due to Dragon Rage instead of Bite. And then the Growlithe goes down to Surf. Alakazam comes out next. It doesn't reflect. That's awesome. Let's see what we can do. Oh! We get a critical hit. <laughs> you know what? I'll take it. I will take it right now. I... I'd like to try and keep them consistent, but as a first playthrough, for sure, let's let's take that crit and run with it. Anyways, we take on this Grunt outside of Giovanni. It's relatively easy. So let's get right to the Giovanni fight. This Giovanni fight's not going to be hard at all for Gyarados, as we have Surf, and he's particularly just ground-type Pokemon. And we're just going to spam Surf. Nidorino gets the treatment of two Surfs. Rhyhorn comes out next. It's a one-shot. Beautiful. And Kangaskhan is the only Pokemon we're not going to use Surf on. We're going to use Return just because it's going to do a little bit more damage due to our physical attack compared to our special attack. And then Neoqueen goes down in two Surfs as well. We take only about 37 HP and damage. What can I say? Relatively easy. And then it's on to the Sabrina fight. Now... I should have maybe did a different routing for this and maybe did Blaine first. But I figured with Return and our physical attack and her Pokemon's physical defense being weak, we'd probably be fine, even though I use Bite versus Kadabra here. But as you can see, we do switch to Return at some point, just not versus the Mr. Mime until it uses Calm Mind. And then we take it out. And then the Venomoth is next. And it's a two-shot still. It does confuse us, so we... It's almost like we're using Thrash here. <laughs> I'm hilarious. Anyways, we finally take it down after a couple potions. And then the Alakazam comes out. And it just sets up Combine as we one-shot it with Return. And make our way to Cinnabar Island. Now, this one, I remember as a kid being way harder to route and get through. 
for some reason. But man, this took me two minutes, and I just like stumbled upon it. I don't, I don't know. I just kind of, I always got those two cliffs mixed up. It is what it is. We pick up the TM for Blizzard, and then we pick up the secret key to get into the gym. And then I do take on most of these trainers just to have a little bit of extra XP as I'm starting to see a little bit more difficulty than I thought we were going to be seeing. We're level 46 going into this, and just like Giovanni, it's a surf spam. We one-shot the Growlithe, the Ponyta, the Rapidash is a one-shot too, and then the Arcanine comes out next, and it is, ooh, it's a two-shot, but Fire Blast doesn't do much damage. And after a couple potions, we're able to take it out and get our seventh badge. Gyarados is rolling. If it wasn't for such a slow start due to Brock, I think we'd be in a very good situation. But it is what it is, and we'll make our way to our final gym badge and see what we can do for time. Now, we can't just make our way to Viridian yet, as we got to tell Bill to fly a kite as we are not going to the islands. Otherwise, that would just take way too long. And then we finally make our way to Viridian City to take on our final gym leader, Giovanni. And who else as a kid thought this was just the biggest twist? The final gym leader was none other than Team Rocket genius Giovanni. I know I should. Now, we thought the self co fight was relatively easy with Surf. The gym fight is even easier as all his Pokemon are part ground now. He's got two Rhyhorns that we take out in one shot with Surf. Dugdrio has pitiful defense, so Surf takes it out. Nidoqueen's a two shot. Just barely, but it is. And we are able to take it out after a couple after a potion. Nidoqueen is next, and it's a one shot. And, well, Gyarados basically just ran the show there. We go get Strength finally, because I completely forgot to get that. And then grab the Rare Candy there. And then I make my way to grab the Mystical Water. And... Also, the TM for Thunderbolt. Um, I think Thunderbolt's going to come super in handy, especially for Turd. And I also think it's going to come in handy for Lorelei, possibly as well. But let's see how we go here. I'm going to teach Thunderbolt before going into this last rival fight before the Elite Four. Hopefully, it helps us out. I know our special defenses, our special attack, sorry, is really bad. But there's not much else we can do. We only learn normal physical attacks besides Earthquake. And Earthquake just isn't going to help us in this case by any means. Thunderbolt's a two-shot. It only Feathers Dance, so Return's not going to be very helpful anymore. Which is means Venusaur is going to be tough. Gyarados is... Ooh. Ooh. Thunderbolt doesn't take it down in one shot. That's... Uh, that's not ideal by any means. We are now minus four on attack. Also, I just wanted to point that out. So, I think you guys know where this fight's going. As you can see, the Alakazam takes us down to 50 HP. And the Venusaur, not even a quarter with the way our attack is set up. And we go down. Alright, let's try this again. Hopefully, we don't see a Feather Dance. It's wing attack, perfect. So we don't have to worry about being minus two before seeing those intimidates. And everything goes exactly to plan, just like it was. Thunderbolt, still, that, that was even a lower roll. That's tough, that's tough, oh well. We move on to the Growlithe, take it out. And then onto the Alakazam, which we're gonna return here and take it down in two shots, but it disables, returned. Oh no, oh no indeed. Oh, and that was a big psychic. I, 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 okay, okay. Well, there's only one option here. We're at level 49, and we learned Dragon Dance at level 50. So, let's go train a little bit on this bike path as we left every single trainer here until we get to level 50 and are able to learn Dragon Dance as this is going to be crucial as we can get rid of those pesky, pesky Intimidates and are able to maybe take down the Venusaur. All right, let's try it out here. Let's see what we can do. We have not taught Thunderbolt anymore. We're gonna go physical attacking route for sure. We're gonna set up on the Pidgeot as it can't really do much to us as long as it just wing attacks instead of Feather Dance or 
sand attack, we're in a good spot. We get to plus four. That means we'll be plus two once the Gyarados and the Growlithe comes out. And everything goes exactly how it's been going from the original starting point. We are now plus three and we one shot the Gyarados, which is beautiful. Surf's gonna one shot Growlithe and we're gonna be able to one shot the Alakazam only being plus two now. And it's a matter of what can we do to this Venusaur? And it's almost a one shot Dragon Dance. Thank you very much. We make our way through Victory Road and we grab the rare candy at the top of the first area in there after doing this crazy puzzle. After doing Hoenn for so long, this puzzle was so obnoxious. Give me an easy route through Victory Road. Anyways, let's grab this rare candy and then it's off to Victory. It's off to the Elite Four. Are we able to take down all five of our next challenges with this Gyarados? I personally think we've got a good shot here. I am going to deposit all of our HM friends as they are no longer needed. We are then going to go buy four full restores as that's all we are going to need for this challenge. And then it's off the take on Lorelei. Now my strategy through the Elite Four is pretty simple. We're gonna Dragon Dance. We are gonna get to as high as we can for certain attack, and then it's just hit and return. So like you can see, we're plus two attack here. I think I go for a plus three. We get greedy, but it, Dugon still has only done one Ice Beam so far, so two, and it gets a crit. Oh, and Hale's gonna take us out. That's, that's tough. Okay, well, let's try this again. Let's not get as greedy. Maybe Dugan doesn't hit that critical hit Ice Beam either. So let's set up two times. We're going to set up a third time. And then I don't... We did we did go four. <laughs> so we still are greedy. We just went for the... Hopefully there's not a critical hit and there wasn't. We take down the Dugan in one shot. Coyster's trying to stall out some hail damage. And it gets a double protect. Get out of here. See you later, Cloyster. Slow bros next. And if this is one shots, it does. I think we're sitting pretty good. Jinx is going to go down. It's pretty frail. And Lapras is going to go down. It lived on what looks like 1 HP. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's try this again. I decide let's not set up on the Dugong because it's doing quite a bit of damage. I do get one set up in as it does heal here. But... I figured let's heal on our list set up on the cloister and that was a terrible idea the cloister sure it protects here a couple times but we still lost just as much health as we did before and now we got to try and set up on the cloister and it can do it can do damage to us and we don't I got scared so we didn't do as many dragon dance as we should have and we don't one shot the cloister we do one shot the slow bro, which is awesome. We do one shot the jinx, because again, it's frail. If we hit the slow bro down, we're gonna hit the jinx down. And then Lapras lives again on one HP. Okay. You got me. Let's let's use some rare candies. Go to level 55 and try one more time. Now, are the rare candies going to be enough? Let's find out and see. I have a feeling they are. We're gonna set up on the Dugon because I just felt it was a little bit easier. We get a critical hit actually so then we go back to the cloister for setting up it just sets up spikes and then decides to use protect so we're at plus three attack so far we're gonna go for plus four it just keeps protecting i don't i don't know cloister's actual move set but it looks like it doesn't have any attacking moves which is great so it actually is the right mon to set up on once we take down the dugon slow bro goes down in one shot again jinx comes out next same song and dance as we've been doing. It's just, are we going to one-shot the Lapras? And we finally do. That's all we needed to do. I'm not going to even show the Bruno fight because we absolutely throttled him. Gyarados needed nothing. Didn't even have the Mystic Water on. And I'm just going to tell you guys, surf, a couple dragon dances, and return. And then it's on to Agatha, the serious, scary fight. Are we able to take down her Gengars? Are we able to take down what is possibly one of the most random Elite Four members in Pokemon? At least in my opinion. Well, let's find out. And we can't rely on Dragon Dance. Or 
Well, no, we can't because all we know is normal physical moves at this point, and we can't even teach our earthquake because Gengar has levitate in this generation. So we get the biting. See how many it takes. We get the Gengar down, and then Golbat comes out next. Now, I said we can't rely on Dragon Dance, but then I started to think maybe we should Dragon Dance for Golbat and her Arbok. It does get a poison off us thanks to its poison fang. So we aren't going to be able to win this one. So it's a matter of let's see what we can do with getting the dragon dances off in the right situations for those two Pokemon. Especially because Arbok has Intimidate. A lot of Gen 1 Pokemon got Intimidate it seems and it's quite annoying. But let's try again here. So we bite down the Gengar to healing range. Just kidding because it critical hits. Now it's time to Dragon Dance on the Golbat. Hopefully we do not get poisoned. But we are confused and we start to hit ourselves. Oh, I'm having a fun time with this one, aren't I? Anyways, we get down the Arbok to healing range. We have 4 HP in a dream. Are we able to do it? We take down the Arbok. We got Gengar and Haunter left. Bite's not going to get it done. And the Gengar takes us out. Okay, let's try this again. Now. I'm going to bite the first Gengar. We get a critical hit. It's in healing range, so we Dragon Dance. Perfect. We get a free one off due to the full restore. It's bite. It double teams. And the first Gengar typically only double teams. But we take it down anyways. We've got one. So this means we don't have to do an extra Dragon Dance versus Golbat. We get three off as it's just air cuttering. And we take it down with a return. Our box next. And does the return one shot? It does. I think that might have been a high roll, which is perfect. Gengar comes out. He doesn't get the hypnosis off. Thank goodness. We get a flinch. It then puts us asleep, but I did have a Chesto Berry on just for that specific occasion. And then it decides to sludge bomb instead of hypnosis. Haunter is left, and two bites is all we need as it misses hypnosis. And we take down Agatha. Now I decide to get rid of bite for we can use Thunderbolt. So we have no more use for Bite, and Thunderbolt is going to be crucial for the Gyarados for Lance and possibly helpful with Dragonite in the near future here. But let's get into this Dragon Champion and see what we can do. The Gyarados comes out, we Thunderbolt, and it doesn't take it out. I know we are only one level different, and our special defense, our special attack is not the greatest, but that's that hurts. And then Aerodactyl gets a critical hit and takes us out. Okay, well, we forgot to save in front of Lance. Wow. Okay, well, thankfully this fight goes extremely well, and we're able to take down Agatha again using very similar strats to what we did before. We actually didn't have to drag dance against the Gengar, which is kind of nice, but then we get three Dragon Dances off on the Golbat. It doesn't poison us, and it doesn't confuse us. And we're able to move right through it. The R box is going to be a one shot. So it wasn't a high roll actually. It is nice to know that I guess for the future. And then a couple bites take down the Gengar as it misses Hypnosis. And does get in the healing range. Which is kind of. Uh, it's always just a little annoying when you get them right in that red range. But we get a critical hit on the second time through of its healing. And then we take down Haunter in two again. Or one because it curses and it dies itself. And this time we do save in front of Lance. That way we don't have to worry about doing that ever again. Because I do not like that fight. And Thunderbolt still, even with a high roll, doesn't get the Gyarados down. So it is going to be two shots. We do take advantage of the full restore with a, with a Dragon Dance just in case we need it in the future. And then Aerodactyl comes out. We surf. And again, just leaves it on a sliver. It's Scary Faces with shoulders of Speed. And then Hyper Beams. And Scary Face isn't great. I know we can set up our speed again with Dragon Dance, but now we're only even speed. And let's see how it goes, I guess. We are able to take down both Dragonairs with Return. Are we faster than the Dragonite now, though, without it? And we are, actually. And if it wasn't for that Hyper Beam, I think we had it. Anyways, we use the remaining rare candies we have left. We go up to level 60. The Thunderbolt still isn't a one-shot. Again, we take advantage, use Dragon Dance, and then take it down with... Two. Ooh, that Thunderbolt did. That Maybe we had a low roll. Interesting. Surf still isn't a one-shot there. Dactyl does use Scary Face again. 
but we are able to take it out and then set up a dragon dance on the dragon air i go for a second dragon dance or a third i guess but then it thunder waves ah <sighs> So Dragonair is not a Pokemon to set up on due to that. We even make our way all the way back to the Dragonite again and lose once more time. Well, let's see what we can do. I'm getting a little frustrated at this point and I'm trying to figure out how to place where we need our return. We set up on the Gyarados. We go two, three, and four Dragon Dances while Gyarados is just dragging raging us and... Yeah, we have 64 HP. I don't know if we are in a good spot, and we aren't, as we don't one-shot the Aerodactyl with return, even with plus four attack. And it takes us down with an ancient power. Okay, okay. I know, I, I'm getting to the point where I'm thinking level 60 just isn't going to be what it takes. But I'm stubborn, so let's try this again. We set up again on the Gyarados there. We're plus four. And then we hit a return to take it out. Okay. We have 104 HP. We're in a little bit better situation than we were. I hit Surf. It goes for Scary Face. So we're still faster than it, which is great. So we take no damage from the Aerodactyl. A return will take down the Dragon Air. And we'll take down the second Dragon Air. And now it's just up to what we do against the Dragonite. And we get a critical hit. I'll take it. I will take that for sure. And we are on to the champion one last battle is all that's left and we know we can take this at this level we just have to drag and dance and not see sand attack Wait, two sand attacks three okay well i got a little greedy on the dragon dances i think i don't think we needed that much but let's see how this one rolls out and we already start missing. We do get the right down down without taking any damage though. It did lower our speed a little bit. And then we start missing a lot. And Alakazam Sam crits. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, and then we trade misses with the Gyarados and it takes us down with Thrash. Okay. Well, honestly, I think this site's relatively easy. So not overly concerned with that outcome. I do think Sand Attack had a very big part in that outcome, unfortunately. So let's try it again and see what happens. We're going to set up again versus the Pidgeot with one Dragon Dance. It Aerial Aces. Okay, no Sand Attacks. I'm liking what we see. We got three Dragon Dances, and there's one Sand Attack. Okay, four Dragon Dances and a fifth one. Still only one Sand Attack. Okay, are we able to do it with just one Accuracy Drop? I didn't like that. And we have 1 HP. Well, 4 HP thanks to the level up. But still, are we going to be able to do it? We one-shot the Alakazam. Gyarados comes out next, and we miss. <sighs> Maybe I'm just overconfident when we go into these. I don't know. We get set up with plus 3. And then we're going to go and take down the Pidgeot. No sand attacks. Okay. We're going to surf the ride on, take it out. Okay, everything's going well, but we do need, I think, at least another attack boost. And it's just a matter of picking where to do it. We take down the Alexam with a return. That's relatively easy. And we decide to do it on the Gyarados because Dragon Rage is its best attack. We're able to get two more, which will cancel out the Intimidates from Arcanine and the Gyarados. Extreme Speed plus us the 4 HP... And it full restores. Is return going to be enough? It is. We should have just returned from the beginning. Can we take down the Venusaur? And we do. 4 HP in a dream. And Gyarados has beat the Kanto region. Oh. This was a fun run. Fun run. Early on was interesting because we did have to strategically maneuver a little bit. But we're able to get it done. Gyarados is in the Hall of Fame. And at a time of 5 hours and 51 minutes. Well, if you guys have made it this far, please hit that like button. If you really like the video, please hit the sub button. Until next time, we will have more Kanto videos and more Hoenn videos. I can't wait till the next video. Have a good one.